The internet has become an outlet for those who want to be heard. Whether for financial gain or personal glory, people can get their message across and cause significant damage. Imagine if you were being able to sit in a bedroom and hack uh, the AP Twitter account and wipe 200 billion off the stock market in a matter of seconds. That's, that's an amazing, powerful thing to be able to do. In recent years, the hackers have got political. Hacker activists, or hacktivists, do their online attacks not to make money, but to make a political point. They're not interested in personal gain. They're not trying to become rich. They hack into places or leak information or launch denial of service attacks to make a point, to protest. There's a lot of people out there who are doing the right things morally, but in the wrong way legally. And they're kind of, they're giving, they're kind of like throwing themselves on the fire for everyone else, doing things that other people wouldn't dare do. And as growing numbers of people vent their frustration and dissatisfaction from behind their computers, the number of politically motivated online attacks seems set to rise. The, the leaders of Pandora's box, and we're now always going to have some form of lobbying or protest in cyberspace. But when it comes to hacktivists, like those in Anonymous, who really is behind the mask? IB Times UK speaks to various experts about the rise of online activism and talks to a member of Anonymous face to face to ask why they feel the group has become such a recognised force. A lot of our power comes from the fact that the average person uses the internet a lot and relies on it heavily, but doesn't understand it at all. Hackers have been around since the birth of the internet, exploiting cyberspace for better or worse. But the cyber protester is a much more recent phenomenon. Really, hacktivism is just activism using electronic media. Um, and it, it creates uh, other opportunities for people to network, for to meet each other, to form um, uh, cyber protest groups. It's, it's ultimately political, that there's a cause that people feel strongly about, uh, they feel frustrated, and because they can, they, they, they have a, a, and if they've got the level of technical skill and prowess, there's an, another way for them to express that frustration. The breakthrough for online activism came in 2008, when Anonymous, a leaderless hacker collective, announced themselves to the world with Project Genology, a series of protests, pranks and hacks against the Church of Scientology. Going on to assist the Arab Spring in Tunisia and Egypt, as well as publicly supporting whistleblower site WikiLeaks and the Occupy movement, last year it was voted by readers of Time magazine as the most influential figure of 2012. But who makes up this network of hacktivists? Anonymous is a brand. It's sort of like an umbrella under which different kind of activists can, can do their operations. And when we look at different operations done by Anonymous over the years, um, it's quite clear that different operations have totally different participants. So they have different leadership, different structure, different activists, different motivations. But the branding is the same. And, and the idea of doing grassroots activism online instead of the real world remains the same. Basically, if you say you're anonymous, then you're a member. There's no joining, there's no initiation. As long as you say you're anonymous, then you're a member. The only thing is, if you do something in the name of Anonymous, which the collective doesn't agree with, you'll be kicked out straight away. But what draws people to commit these acts online, even if they are illegal? We spoke to Cal Leeming, a reformed hacker who in his criminal past stole upwards of three quarters of a million pounds by the time he was 19 years old. I, I thoroughly enjoyed what I did and still still do in terms of you know, the legal stuff anyway. Um, but you know, back, back in those days, yeah, I mean, I really, really did get a kick out of it. And some of the, sort of, well, at least two of the close friends that I have now, in fact, probably my only close friends, are, um, are ones that I met when I was, you know, 10, 11 years old on, on IRC. You know, and I met them in real life, and, you know, they've all gone on to, to do similar things as myself, you know, uh, so, you know, not breaking the law and such, but, yeah, we've had some, had some really good times. For hackers like Cal, it was the ability to connect with people across the world that fueled his actions. Now these groups of disenfranchised individuals are meeting up online to not just cause chaos, but work together for a single political cause. Criminals target everybody. They don't really care who they steal from. I mean, I mean if, if you're running a botnet trying to steal credit card numbers with a keylogger, you don't really care whose credit card number you're getting. You don't even care where in the world that victim is. 
Activist groups don't work like that. They select their targets. To be targeted by a movement like Anonymous, you have to do something to, to become the target. Cal admitted that whilst he respected the intentions of hacktivists, some of the attacks ultimately seemed pointless. I give those, sort of, I give those people a huge amount of respect. Whether or not they broke the law is irrelevant. It's whether or not they did a good thing. Um, however, the ways that they've gone about it sometimes, I think, aren't that productive. For example, you know, DDoSing uh, you know, a, co a company or whatever and then going to jail for it, what, what was the point? You know, you take this site down for a couple of hours, big deal, that's not going to help the world. Um, I, I have a lot more respect for those who make an impact rather than are just kind of doing it because they can and, you know, because it's, it's, it's easy for them. We wanted to hear from someone associated with Anonymous to find out why they affiliated themselves with the group and what they hope to achieve as an online activist. A prominent UK member agreed to come into our studio and speak on camera. In order to protect his identity, he wears the infamous Guy Fawkes mask and his voice has been distorted. If you call yourself anonymous, all it means is that at this time, in this place, you believe X, Y or Z. Everyone decides their own level of involvement. You can't really define what the typical member of anonymous is or the typical kind of cause or their standard kinds of beliefs are because there are no there are no regular or concrete members. We they like to characterize us as mysterious hackers and very, very cloak and dagger and superheroes or villains. But really we mostly disenfranchised, disillusioned regular people. In terms of the UK, I've seen an influx of younger, the well, teenagers mostly, um, politically disenfranchised, especially by the Lib Dem and all of that stuff. They don't see a viable, they don't see a viable institutional um, political outlet. They don't see a route by which their own opinions can be expressed. And they see the persecution of leakers and so on and so forth. And generally the political figures who they agree with are either persecuted or ignored. Which is why a lot of them turn to this sort of direct action, going out and having a real influence themselves, despite the risk that that entails. The risk each anonymous member runs is that they could find themselves personally targeted and even face criminal charges for their actions. Back in May, four UK members of LOLSEC, a specialised offshoot of Anonymous, were jailed for their role in a string of cyber attacks. When taking on world governments and huge corporations, there's a reason why protecting your identity is of the utmost importance. There is a calculated risk. We understand that there is a chance that we will attract unwanted attention personally. Hence the need for the mask and so on and so forth, and various online um, precautions. But it's also uh, one of our tools is that we maintain this cloak and dagger over the top dramatic persona because it's both practical and functional, but also it's another one of our weapons. With greater media exposure, it was inevitable that authorities would step up efforts to hunt down those linked to Anonymous. Whether that affects members joining remains to be seen. It looks like they get taken down there. It's, they're probably the most high profile members of Anonymous or group within Anonymous that um, we've seen. And they, but they only got taken down because their leader, um, who was, turned, uh, was arrested by the FBI and became an informant and gave up everyone that was in the group pretty much. Um, so, well, yes, it kind of serves as a bit of a reality check for some people. I think most people that want to join Anonymous do so not, well, they might do it for the fame online, but they do it because they believe in a cause or they believe in something that Anonymous is doing. Uh, so I don't think that these arrests or the jail time that people have been given will really affect how many people join Anonymous. So while some of the more high-profile members associated with Anonymous have recently found themselves behind bars, around the world, hacktivism continues to rise. 
In an age of growing dissatisfaction with world governments and major corporations, it appears that people will no longer stay silent and will instead continue to take action. And it will vary from cause to cause as to what's being protested about because society is digital so that the level of support or not support isn't about the activist group, it's about the issues they represent. And if, if people support those issues, they may tend to support the group. If people don't support those issues, they'll probably tend not to support the group because it's, it's just a phenomenon of society becoming digital. As a whole, I think hacktivism is here to stay. I don't see it going away anytime soon. It, it appeared a little bit in a surprising way, um, and it's, it's a little bit hard to see how exactly it's, it's going to continue operating as a single group like Anonymous. You could easily see it splitting into splinter groups. But overall, as a phenomenon, I don't see it going away anytime soon. Thank you.